continuing with the lessons on building strategic business relationships and um, following up from our previous lesson which in which we describe what are we how do we identify whether our relationship uh, is in fact a partnership and we talk about these three dimensions longevity degree of closeness and long-term orientation from which I describe that the two main characteristics of uh, a, a, a close relationship is degree of closeness, intensity of the interaction between customer and supplier, and long-term orientation, meaning how far in the future we are planning together. The follow-up question is, is this a good relationship? What, wh how do we identify whether this is a mutually beneficial relationship? Now, this question has two sides. In a transactional business relationship, maybe there is no degree of closeness, there is uh, no long-term orientation, we're just conducting business transactions, but both sides of the relationship are mutually satisfied. So, so if, if you may, the, the, the key element whether a relationship is a good relationship is whether both sides of the relationship are taken out from the relationship uh, what they expected. Now, in order for a relationship to move into a close relationship, then we've got to pay attention to a couple of things. And I split the, 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 the features of, of a, a healthy long-term um, relationship in two dimensions, health and success. How do we identify whether a relationship, a close relationship is healthy? Well, there is top-to-top -top um, interaction. Uh, sometimes at the operational level issues happen that seem to be uh, like a tug of war. I mean you push one side or, or you push the other one. Now when operational uh, plans or issues are in conflict usually those issues can be resolved at the business level and in order for an operational issue to become a business issue and discuss it at a business level, then um, both individuals from, from, from higher up in the, in, in, the, in the hierarchy of the companies have to make the decision and the judgment, the judgment call. Following that top-to-top -to -top interaction, then we have that multiple levels of the organization are in touch. Again, issues that are operational, might be solved at the business level. So, so the higher in the organization, the more degrees of freedom to make calls that are at the operational level are maybe shorter term oriented. So the fact that there are multiple levels of the organization interacting with multiple levels of their counterparts on the other side of the relationship, that's a sign of health. The other dimension of uh, multiple levels or multiple points of contacts is the multiple uh, functions that interact within each other. Because given that the manufacturing person on the supplier side and the manufacturing person on the customer side, given that they both live in the same world, they have the same type of problems, they will be able to understand each other and to communicate their problems and understand what they what each one can do for the other one faster than the manufacturing person from one side talking to the salesperson of the same side of the relationship or the finance person of the same side of the relationship. So functional expertise get us close together because we live in the same, in the same mental framework. So that's the cross-functional interaction. The other element of health uh, from my point of view, is the ability to split. The moment where we have to negotiate a contract, where we have to negotiate for money, and when we are working together to execute the business jointly. If price negotiation is present at every single moment in time, then it's going to be very hard for the operational people to be able to do what is best for uh, the joint effort. So we address already mutuality, but again, having mutuality is the ability to think 
uh, from the point of view of the other side of the relationship. And, and, and again, the fact that, that both, both individuals from the same functional area, manufacturing, manufacturing, logistics, logistics, IT, IT, finance, finance, compliance, compliance, you name it. The fact that they live in, in similar worlds, that they have the same terminology, they understand the same, they work on the same time frame, uh, that helps them communicate better. The other element is ambidexterity. Ambidexterity, technically speaking, means the ability to write with both hands at the same time. And some people can do that. Um, ambidexterity in business means that you have the ability to think in the short term and the long term kind of at the same time. Probably it's not exactly at the same time, but, but it means that, that you, can, you can think about the decisions that you have to make that have short-term implications and those that have longer-term uh, implications. The next element is to bring objectivity to um, problem solving or to negotiation. Uh, and, and objectivity is brought into a negotiation when we, when we speak scientifically, when we speak with metrics, when we speak with data. Uh, it's, not, it's not my opinion. Um, it, it, it's, it's data that is speaking uh, by itself. And uh, the last element is trust. And the other side of the coin of trust is commitment. So the more trust you expect, the more commitment you have to show uh, to that relationship. And we have a lesson uh, about uh, trust and commitment. So this is regarding health. The other element that I think uh, it's important to have in mind is what is success? And, and success means that we are satisfied, whatever that means. It, it's subjective. Um, some people are satisfied with less, some people are satisfied with, with more. And I always uh, like to provide the simple example of what happens when we go to watch a movie. Uh, a friend of ours tells us, oh man, that movie is awesome. It's fantastic. It's super good filming, super good script, and so on and so forth. And, and all that person is doing is raising our expectations. Now, we might go into the movie theater expecting to see a fantastic movie. The movie is okay, so our experience is below our expectations, uh, so we are not satisfied. Now, if that person tells us, well, the movie is okay, it's good to spend the time, it's just just okay. Uh, and we believe that the movie is, yeah, it's okay and some more, then we're going to be really satisfied. So, so satisfaction is, is, is a subjective. Um, so it's hard to articulate what does it mean? What do I expect from a relationship? Um, and if I cannot articulate my expectations, I won't be able to communicate those expectations. And if I cannot communicate those expectations, then the other side of the relationship will not have a chance to help me achieve uh, those uh, expectations. So, so the key element to this sequence of satisfaction, expectations, and communications is actually the ability to articulate. So I need to be able to put in writing, what do I expect from the other side of the relationship and put a metric associated with it so we can measure whether we achieved what I expected uh, before we began this. Until I am not able to do that, I'm not able to share those expectations. And if I don't have a metric, then we won't be able to um, measure success, measure satisfaction. Ultimately, in a healthy business to business relationship, the key is what can you do to help me achieve higher degrees of profitability and how can I help you achieve higher degrees of profitability? Objectives could be different. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that, that the objectives, the expectations should be the same. They should not be in conflict. If they're in conflict, then it's going to be hard it's going to be hard for me to help you achieve something that at the same time hurts me. But 
if it doesn't hurt me, then I'm super open to help you. And the opposite is true. Now, when when objectives are conflicting, then a discussion can ha can can happen, and we just establish the level of satisfaction for both. So again, ultimately, the goal is what 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 can a supplier do to help a customer um, achieve uh, the customer's expectations and vice versa? What can the customer do for the supplier to achieve the customer the supplier's expectations? Uh, that's why uh, my mentor likes to say that um, the key chains in the supply chain are built by the customer relationship management and the supplier relationship management efforts of both companies. If you have any questions, then just uh, write it below or uh, contact me to follow up on this discussion.